Hey guys, thanks for joining Learn to Play. My name is Lance, and today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Blood Rage, Guillotine Games' new game. So this is a 2-4 to four player game, unless you've purchased the expansion for it that'll make it 2-5. to five. It takes about an hour to an hour and a half to play, and in this game you're playing as different Viking clans trying to gather the most glory before the world comes to an end in Ragnarok. And you do this by doing battles and completing quests and various other things. So let's head to the table and I'll teach you how to play. All right, so let's go over the clan sheets real quick. So each clan sheet is exactly the same. The only difference is the symbol that the clan is associated with. And then each sheet has uh, upgrade slots for the leader and the warrior, the ship, your three clans slots and your monsters if you get any. At the bottom of the card, it's going to list your choice of five actions that you can perform during your turn. It also lists the cost and rage for those actions and a, a quick description of those actions as well as a good reminder. Next to each one of your figures, you are going to have a red circle that's going to list their strength. The monsters will have their strength listed on their cards. In the center of the table, you have your rage track, and this will track the amount of rage you have to spend during your action phase. And at the bottom, in the middle here, we have the three different stats that we'll keep track of with tokens. So we'll put those tokens out. So the first one, at the beginning of, of the action phase of each age, you will check this, this stat, and it'll list the amount of rage that you get to start with. So we get to start with six at the beginning of the game. The second stat is your axes, which will tell you how much glory you get for winning battles. So initially you're gonna get three glory for every battle that you win. And then the last stat that you're gonna track is the horns, which will limit the number of figures you can have on the board at any one time. So initially you can have up to four warriors or four uh, different figures on the map. And then at the end of the game, if you've happened to move these stats far enough, you will get 10 glory if you have them in these last two sections here. And if you happen to get any of your stats in the very last section, you'll pick up 20 glory for each one. And then once you've done all that, then you can go ahead and grab the figures for your clan. So you'll get one ship, you'll get eight warriors of two different sculpts that they'll have in the box and your leader and you are ready to start the game all right so i'm going to go over setup of the age track real quick so the first thing you'll do is go ahead and place the three card stacks on the god's gift spaces according to the age from there you'll go ahead and put the saga token on the first stack of cards because that'll be the first thing that we'll do during the first turn and then we'll go ahead and shuffle up the tokens and deal out three to determine the different provinces that are going to be destroyed during the Ragnarok during the three ages and that's it Alright, so for final player setup, each player will get the eight warriors that are associated with their clan. They'll go ahead and clip on the color bases to go with them. They'll each get one leader, which is the person with the standard, and then one ship, which is the color of their clan. Each player will also receive two large clips and two small clips for their monster upgrades if they choose to purchase any monsters. And then we're ready to go over the board setup. So for board setup, uh, Blood Rage is made up of three different regions. We have Mannheim, which is yellow, Judenheim, which is blue, and Elfheim, which is gray. And then we have Yrkdrasil in the middle, which is its own special zone. Each of the sections, so the board is made up of nine region or uh, nine provinces, and then each province has a number of villages in it from three to five. And the villages are, are where the players will play their various figures to gain control of those zones and try to pillage them. So from here we're gonna go ahead and find out with a four-player game one of these zones will start the game destroyed. So we'll grab our tokens and mix them up 
and flip over one. So this zone has already been destroyed by Ragnarok and won't be part of this game. From there, then we take the, our tokens, our pillage tokens, and we put the green one on your Richter Sill, and the rest will get mixed up and placed on the pillage zones. Now this is the only time in the game that we'll do this. Every turn that these will get revealed, they just get flipped right back over at the end of the turn. Uh, next we're going to take, each player will have a score token to go on their track for their glory. And then we'll mark with our doom track on the first stage. The province is going to be destroyed next, which will be that one. And then we'll hand the first player token to one player. So we'll go ahead and let the serpents go first. And then we're ready to start the game. Uh, the last thing to point out we have is Valhalla, which I haven't gone over yet. And that is where, as warriors die during the turn, that's where they'll be placed. And so at the end of each age, we will be releasing those warriors and figures back to their owners so that they can be played again. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do starting the game is the God's Gift phase, which is where our token is. So during the God's Gift phase, you will take the first stage stack and uh, deal out eight cards to each player, which I've already gone ahead and done to save some time. So once each player has their cards, they're gonna go ahead and look at the cards that they have, and they're gonna go ahead and choose one of the cards to keep, and then they'll pass the rest of the cards to the player to their left. And you'll keep doing this until you have a, a, a hands of six cards. The two cards remaining will go back to the dealer, and those won't be used for this game. All right, so I'd like to take a look at the different cards you're gonna run to during the game. And so for our first set, we're gonna look at the upgrade cards. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the red circle is gonna have a number in it, and that's gonna be the costs in rage that that card is to play. And for the first four, it's also gonna be the strength of the unit that it's associated with. On the side of the cards, it lists what unit that affects. So we have a warrior upgrade card, a ship upgrade card, a leader upgrade, the monster upgrade, and then overall clan upgrade cards. Each card also has text that will give uh, that particular unit special abilities. So for example, the ship will gain four glory points when a ship of yours is destroyed. And then on the side of the cards, some of them will have numbers on them. And with those cards, that is the minimum number of players that those cards can be played with. So for example, if you're playing a two player game, the three plus and four plus cards would be removed from the deck. All right, so the next thing we're gonna look at are our quest cards. So at the top of the quest cards, it's going to list the conditions for completing that quest. And then in the little blue square, it's also gonna list the amount of glory that each of those quests is worth if you complete it. Underneath, it's also going to usually list an additional reward for completing that quest. So most of these quests will give you a, uh, a, the ability to raise one of your clan stats by one if you complete them. Alright, so the last set of cards we're going to look at are the battle cards. At the top of those cards, it's going to list the different god that that card's associated with. In the white circle, it's going to list the uh, strength bonus that those cards will grant in the combat that they're played in. And then some of the cards you'll notice also have text with them that will give that card a special ability during that combat. So for example, with this one, we can destroy one warrior from each opponent in the province before comparing strength. And for this one, if you pillage successfully, raise another one of your clan stats by one. So some of the cards will give you uh, pretty good abilities, uh, but they will also not be quite as strong as cards that don't give you abilities. All right, so we're ready to move into the action phase. So we'll move the Saga token to the action phase. And at the beginning of the action phase during each of the three ages, the players will consult their rage stat to determine the amount of rage that they have on their rage track. 
So at the beginning of the first stage, all players will have six rage. From there on your turn, you, will, you must choose a single action to perform from those listed at the bottom of your card. You, if that action costs rage, then you must pay that rage before you perform that action. If you don't have enough rage to cover that action, then you cannot perform that action. And if at the start of your turn you have zero rage, then you cannot perform any action, even actions that don't cost any rage at all. All you can do at that point is react to other players during their turns, such as in combat, when they declare a pillage. Uh, if you cannot perform an action or you do not wish to perform an action during your turn, you may choose to pass. If you choose to pass and you'll lose any rage that you have left, and yet again all you could do at that point is react to other players during their turns. Once you've performed your action, your turn is over and play will move to the player to, his, to your left. Now there's a couple of conditions that will end the action phase during each of the three ages. And those conditions are if all players have zero rage or if all the territories that have not been destroyed by Ragnarok have been pillaged and their tiles flipped over. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at the five different options we have for actions we can perform during our turn. So the first one we're going to look at is an invade, which will let us take one of our figures from our reserve and place it in one of the empty villages along the, one of the eight different provinces, as long as that province has not been destroyed by Ragnarok yet. The only province we cannot deploy in is Yggdrasil. That one you have to march into, except for a couple of monsters that do have the option to invade directly into it. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples. So the first one we have is a warrior, and we would pay the one rage for our warrior, and we can deploy him in any empty village, so we'll go ahead and put him there. A couple other things to note is that if we invade with our ship, we can only put our ship in one of the four Ford that are available. Any and uh, with those, any number of ships can be in those, so you everybody can be in the same one if they want to. And the last thing to note is with our leader, if we deploy our, or invade with our leader, he invades for free, so we wouldn't have to pay any rage if we choose to invade with him. All right, so let's take a look at the next action, which is a march. So with a march, we would pay one rage. And we can move any number of figures from one province to another province that has open villages. So let's go ahead and say that we have two warriors here and we pay our one rage. We can move them to any province that we choose as long as it has villages that are open. It does not have to be adjacent and the only restriction is that we cannot put it in a province that's already been destroyed by Ragnarok. Now a couple things to note is that we can only take all of the warriors from one province and move them to another we cannot split and take warriors from separate provinces and we cannot take warriors from one province and split them into uh, different provinces as well and we don't have to take all the warriors if we had say like three warriors in here we could choose to just take one and march him over or march him into Yggdrasil or whatever we don't have to take all of them but we can if we want to and another thing is is that with the ships they can never march so once you deploy a ship it has to stay in that zone. There's no way to move it. All right, so the next option we have to look at is the upgrade option, where a player will choose one of the upgrades that are in their hands, and they will pay the costs in the little red circle in Rage. Once they do that, then they can go ahead and put that card out in this slot that it's for. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of it. So we have the Sea Serpent here, who is costing three Rage, so we'll move our, th our Rage down three points. And then we can go ahead and put him in one of our monster slots, and we'll go ahead and grab his token. And as a bonus for the upgrades for the ship, monsters, warriors, and our leader, we also get to deploy the model if we have it in reserve for free. So we'll go ahead and put out our Sea Serpent, because he's counted as a ship, so he'll go into one of the four Fords. So we'll put him there. So as you can see, there's a benefit to playing an upgrade as opposed to an invasion, because you get to do basically two actions for the cost of one. 
All right, so the fourth option we have is committing to a quest. So if we go through our hands and we choose one of the quests that we'd like to commit to, and during our turn, it does not cost any rage to go on a quest. We would simply just announce that we're going on a quest or committing to a quest and play that card face down on our clan sheet. You can commit to any number of quests throughout your actions during the action phase and there is no penalty for not completing quests. All right, so our final option is the pillage, which I've gone ahead and populated our field so that we can see how this works. So during the bear player's turn, he chooses to pillage this province here, which he can do because it has not been pillaged yet. Once he does, then he'll call to battle, and that will allow any player that has a figures that are adjacent to that province to have the opportunity to move into that province as long as there's open villages if they choose. So starting with the wolf player, he can't because he has no one that's adjacent. And then to the raven player who is in the same situation. But once we move into the serpent player, he does have a figure that's adjacent so he can choose to move into that space if he'd like to, which he's going to go ahead and do. One thing to note is that ships can never be moved, so even if there was another ship over in an adjacent space, they could not move over. Once all the spaces are filled, then battle commences. If, for example, there was no figures that could move in there and all that was in there was the bear player, there would not be a battle and he would simply flip the token over and receive its reward. But since there is, both players will look at their hands and choose one card to play face down, one battle card. Once they've done that, they will go ahead and reveal those battle cards, and if there's any special rules on them, they will go ahead and resolve them. So for the bear player, he's played Thor's Hammer, which gives him uh, three glory if he wins this battle. And then on the other side, the servant player played Quinn's Smite, which will allow him to draw, destroy one warrior from each opponent in this province before strength is compared. So the wolf player will lose one of his warriors to Valhalla, and then we'll compare scores. So the wolf player has one point of strength with his warrior and two with his ship for a total of three plus one for four from his battle card. And the serpent player has two warriors for two strength and one from his battle card, so he has three. So the serpent player is lost and he will lose all of his figures to Valhalla. The bear player is one, so he'll gain his three glory for his card. And then this card will get discarded the losing player will get their card back that they can use at a later point. And then we will look at the bear player's axes, which give him glory for winning battles, which his stat is three right now, so he'll move up three more glory. And then he'll flip over the token, which is uh, horns, so he'll get to move up his horns stat by one. And then that battle is over. All right, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and say that all the villages have been pillaged that can be pillaged. So the action phase will come to an end. At that point, we'll move our Saga token over to the next mark, which is this card down to one card. So all players, if they have any cards left in their hand, will go ahead and discard down to one card. Once that's done, then we'll move over to the next phase, which is the quest phase. So we'll go through all of the players, and if any players have any quests that they've committed to, we will check to see if their conditions were met and those players would get any rewards for those quests that they've completed. Once that's done, then we'll move over to Ragnarok phase where we will destroy the province that is next to be destroyed. So Adderlong will be the next one to go. So the warriors that were there will be put to Valhalla and the clans that those warriors are with will get two victory points for each warrior that was destroyed. So both the blue and the red will get two victory points for that. And then we release any warriors that are in Valhalla or any any figures at all. So all those will go back to their respective players. And then the token will move to the God's Gift phase and we will mark the next territory that is going to be destroyed by Ragnarok for the next turn. 
and we're ready to start a new age.